is just want to talk about um, well it, it's all come out of a few of the conversations that have been going on in the comments section on a, a couple of the other videos um, I have to say feminism is a bed of its own making um, now one of the things that's important on this is the lack of responsibility or recognition of the damage that's been done now this isn't me being all victim it's just the reality of things um, I did watch a Channel 4 documentary a while back that actually was having conversations around the dismantling of the family unit. And one of the things that was covered on there, and they spoke to a woman that was started the first women's refuge in the UK. They talked to three people that were editors of it editors and involved with a feminist magazine and they talked to some other people that are actually from a business perspective but the predominant thing on this is they're all feminists and it was the feminist movement where they'd actually driven for the ability for women to work the right to work but what they were then complaining about was the fact is they got the right to work and then the dismantle of the family unit began because they were expecting to have the choice of work. See, having a choice is not a right, you see, it, when it comes to work. It, it becomes a economic value. And the thing with anything like minimum wage, minimum wage, if you push it across the board, you cause price rises that then cause inflation that devalues everything you've just had an increase for. So there is a lot of things that simply have no positive output. In this case, it was a case of they wanted women to have the choice of being able to work, but what's actually happened is they've ended up with women and men both having to work. And this is one of the important things that, that sort of doesn't really get recognized is the damages it's done to society. But it's tied in with the fact that, like this thing where women uh, can't get the top jobs in the UK, nothing stopping them. Nothing stopping them except for choice. And the editors on the same thing actually brought up the thing that changed them. And their viewpoint was when they were young students that were fighting for women's rights, they hadn't had a family life yet. They decided to change and change roles, go part time, drop into a role that wasn't as um, demanding. So they could be at home where you find predominantly males will go the extra mile because the responsibility is still as breadwinner because because the funny thing is if you treated if you treated women the same way feminists once uh, like to treat men um it, it just wouldn't function because they'd be saying well these guys are selfish these guys are this they want this that and the other and the reality is guys are a lot more laid back in that sense but the responsibility of being the breadwinner is existent in the sense that it continues but where all this dismantles is when you start removing the relationship and that's what happened with, with this movement to actually what would they call empower women which actually dismantled um, a lot of the traditional values and structure and it does get into values because if you've got two parents that are working and nobody's at home when the kids are coming home etc the kids are displaced the role models are displaced the people that are important to them aren't there when when they should be and these are the sort of things that i'm sort of highlighting is the fact that i find that predominantly feminism doesn't recognize any of the things it does um it was the same when i was reading the review that was on vox relating to jordan peterson the woman that wrote it, I mean, she is, is down as a feminist, whatever. She was already on the back foot at, as soon as she started, because the title of it is relating to him being a postmodernist. And then it just went into the other, other bits and pieces. But I wouldn't say Jordan Peterson is postmodern anyway, but it, it allows to say this guy's a bad guy. And it's the same when people talk about Tommy Robinson. As soon as you go racist, it dismisses any of the argument or discussion relating to the other parts of the conversation. And and this is one of the things I do find relating to a lot of the stuff with feminism. It, it seems to be a lot of angry people, and often there's not a lot to be angry about. And a lot of the justifications are fake. 
or outdated, as somebody brought up, relating to women wanting to do their own thing with a midlife crisis after waiting uh, for their cheating husband to come home and no longer want to look after the kids, blah, blah, blah. That role model, role model's gone about 20 years ago. That hardly, hardly anybody's in that scenario these days. A lot of people would like to be in this scenario where they could have a traditional uh, value, traditional lifestyle and whatever, but a lot of people don't have it. It's not far to see things like even if you look at Jamie Oliver's stuff relating to trying to get people to actually cook food. Cook food. And it doesn't involve a ping from a microwave. It shows you how far things have moved. Where people have a right to eat pizzas and stuff. <laughs> and I was listening to, uh, what's his name? Pi, uh, the guy who does the these um, broadcasts as if he's outside parliament, etc. And he was on about, oh, targeting poor people. It's not poor people. They just don't cook. A lot of it's lazy people. Um, because if you actually cooked, you can actually produce better food and at a lower cost anyway. It's like making bread. Making bread with raw ingredients is far cheaper than the buying a loaf of bread. And the point is, you don't make one, you make about five, and you, you freeze the other ones. The same with making soups and things like that. You, you freeze the excess. You don't make one bowl of soup, you make quantities of it. And that, that's the thing. When I look at my, my mother, when we, were, when we were kids, we got a sack of potatoes delivered. Every meal was cooked from scratch because there was no microwave. There wasn't even a microwave, sorry. No, no, there was no microwave meals. There was no microwave. And my mother's job was being a housewife and having a twin tub to do the washing and hanging it out. And she could spin it so far, but then she'd have to hang out to dry. That is what a traditional life was for a housewife. And as we, me and my wife were talking about earlier, and my wife was talking about it with her mother as well, the differences between the West and the Philippines, for example, you can see the contrast because they, they're the two existing today. So here, although we do cook a lot of food from raw ingredients, we have that by choice. Before, my mother didn't have a choice on it. There was no other way. There was no ready meals. It didn't exist. Um, in the same way, you, we didn't really have any restaurants. There was only a fish and chip shop, which was about 15, 20 minutes walk. You didn't, you didn't have fast food restaurants everywhere. There was no such, I didn't even know what a kebab was when I was a kid. Um, there was no McDonald's where we lived. I mean, when we were in Hong Kong, there was McDonald's, but where we were in the UK, a lot of these restaurants didn't exist. Um, you still had the old cafes where you go there for your, your breakfast or whatever, but generally it was a working man's or working person's breakfast with the old jukebox and stuff. Um, but it wasn't somewhere you ate out. It wasn't a restaurant, it was a cafe. You went there for a cup of tea, you went there for coffee or whatever. Well, sorry. Be tea, it wasn't even coffee. Along with the fact when I was in Scotland, I used to go to, on a Wednesday with my grandmother to the little calves for what they for scone, tea and scones. It was very traditional. That was the thing they used to do. But the thing is, they had a environment that was functional. Everybody knew what they were doing. It wasn't a case of somebody had to work out where they sat in life. But also they weren't angry about anything. Today everyone seems so angry. One of the things I like about MGTOW is the majority of guys are just asking for it to be left alone and have a peaceful life. What I find from the feminist movement is they're constantly aggressively trying to push the boundary. This Me Too thing is just a, a prime example of like, well we've got everything over here but now we're gonna go and do this next. But the Me Too shouldn't be just focusing on women because obviously there is women that abuse men as well. But let's not bother, let's not dwell on that because that doesn't exist. Feminism doesn't allow that and it'd be their own fault for letting them do it. That's the sort of crap you get from a lot of the feminist stuff. When I was looking at the review with Jordan Peterson's um, 12 Steps, 
that was the sort of thing that was coming out of it. It's like, well, it's their own fault. It's their own fault. Because it's very dismissive. It makes it easy to deal with. And that's my whole point of this, is that there is a lack of responsibility from this feminist movement, um, predominantly. It's like, well, you're going to get more and more feminism and we're going to drive it. And it's like, I don't care. Do you know? I really don't care. Because the thing with the, the whole MGTOW thing, there's an assumption that people have to adapt to it. Um, if you've destroyed the traditional relationships, there is no need. There is no need for a guy to get into that. A guy can simply say, I'm not interested. A guy can simply, I mean, there, there is a assumption in some of the comments that a guy must go and seek out a woman. But as you've already seen with the MGTOW, it is not about that. If anything, it's actually a displacement to say, I recognize that it's not worth the hassle. And a lot of guys deciding to stay celibate, not bother. The obsession that there is a craving for this sexual thing is, is try not to swear, not needed. Why is there an obsession that guys have to be sexually frustrated with it? It just simplifies things. It makes it easier for a feminist argument. But in all honesty, a lot of the guys, well, predominantly nearly all the guys I know, it's not even an issue. It's not an issue at all. Although we're talking, you've got a mix of a channel here with people going to the Philippines. A lot of these guys are just going to the Philippines for a second life. Or whatever. They're not sad. They're not lonely or whatever. A lot of the time they are just going there because they want to change. Or because they've separated, divorced or whatever. They've decided they want to do something different. In the same way the argument was put forward that um, these women are sort of having midlife crisis and want to go and do what stuff they wanted to do in the beginning and put that off for family. There is no family life anymore. Family life's destroyed. Gone. Doesn't exist. The only ones that exist in is, uh, for a lot of people, is probably from a lot of the Asian communities, etc. that still have actually combined morals and obligations along with responsibilities. Um, because in the West, it doesn't really exist. Uh, it's been destroyed, it's been dismantled. A lot of people, even when you try to keep things together, there is a strong fundamental change to try and disrupt it. Um, that is it's going to continue. And although people think, well, feminism is a great thing, women can do what they want, you know what? I've never heard a MGTOW guy saying women can't do what they want. If anything, the majority of MGTOW guys are just simply saying, do what you want. I just don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know about it. I'm disconnecting from that. And in the same way as you, somebody brought up, well, guys are in their 50s wanting an 18-year-old woman. I don't know any guys in their 50s are after an 18-year-old woman. At all. And to actually assume I would is just stupid. My daughter's nearly 18. She's, <laughs> I have zero interest in young women. Um, and the difference between, as I pointed out already, is with myself, I'm more interested in somebody at an intellectual level anyway. It's nothing to do with age. Um, my, my wife's a university graduate. My, my wife um, speaks mo multiple languages. My wife is a very competent individual. At the same time, she doesn't sit there whining as if um, she's missing out on something because the man's taking something from her. Because she, she, uh, she's already aware she can do whatever she likes. And that, that's the reality in the West. There is nothing stopping most women doing whatever they want. They just need some... They just. A lot of them just need to be a victim. Or you get other people trying to make them a victim because it justifies what they've done. In reality, a lot of people are just bad people. That's it. If they aren't happy with their situation and they had higher expectations out of life, that's their own fault. It's no one else's. Nobody forced them to do anything. 
Those those days are gone. There is nobody stopping a woman doing anything in the West. If they are, they'll be from ethnic backgrounds with diverse cultures, etc., that the UK or wherever refuse to acknowledge these things going on. But you know what? Feminists unite and go after them yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's not my problem. At the end of the day, that stuff is related to the specifics that as feminists have such a strong voice and put women's rights first, go for it. Go and deal with Sharia law and stuff like that. You're welcome to it. But don't sit there whining as if you're oppressed by people like myself. We don't oppress anybody. If anything, um, the MGTOW sort of thing, and the fact that people are getting defensive about MGTOW shows a very important factor here. Why does it bother them? Because MGTOW guys ain't bothered. MGTOW guys are just going their own way. That's the whole point. But why would a feminist be bothered about guys just saying, had enough, not interested? That's the big question. Because in honestly, like what I said with feminism, I don't care about feminism. I have zero interest in it. Um, but at the same time, when people go, well, they, they've got out of this, you're just going, doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make, how are you oppressed? Oh, well, the wages are different between the, are they? Are they really? Because when you compare a wage between John, who is a plumber, and Maureen, who's a plumber, are their wages different? Because I don't think so. The wage differences are often taken from Maureen, the, the plumber, and John, the, the bloody director of the company, and saying they're not on the same pay. There are not exact matches, and it's manipulated. It's this whole obsession of being angry about something. And there is a point where people like myself, and a, a lot of MGTOW do the same, say, I don't want to hear anymore. I really am not interested. You can do what you like. Because at the end of the day, fundamentally, that shift has already happened. Well done. Feminism has disrupted the, the family unit. It has encouraged um, children that are now becoming adults not to get into a relationship and look at the father and see that he's been robbed blind so if it's a male they're going to sit there and go what I don't want to have kids I don't want to get married I don't want anybody that's going to dismantle myself financially I see what it did to my father and I see what the outcome of living with a mother so the, the point is well done you created that that, that that's something that is firmly in yours that's in your court um, and I, I know I about that Vox article but even in that it's descriptive in the sense that it actually said uh, by the feminist that wrote the article that um, women should be able to decide who they're with what they're doing da, da, da. fine like I said go for it but at the same time admit responsibility for the damage you've done simple as if you can't i also don't care i'm just putting it out there thanks for watching